Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh wow, I didn't expect you to click on it that fast, but I'm so glad you're here because there's something I want to talk to you about. That is that a lot of you are still scared to death of this guy. In fact, I would dare to say that a lot of you hadn't even taken it out of the box, which is ridiculous. There's no way that you should be scared of this beautifully fine crafted piece of machinery that very well should be your best friend. And it's good timing too, because if you remember this video right here, where uh, it just kind of blew up on me. It would appear that I have murdered my airbrush. It just exploded out of there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, so needless to say, that's not supposed to happen. But I'm gonna help you and help me. We're gonna clean this bad boy, take it completely apart. And while we're doing that, I'm gonna show you a little trick to make your trigger work way better. Also, we might as well just change the needle up, put a brand new needle in it. Cause I kinda, kinda like bent this. Wait a minute, what? Okay, I see problem number one. Come here, can you see this? Come here. Okay, problem number one. Uh, you see the needle sticking out past the end cap? The end cap's there to protect the needle from getting bent. And uh, that is definitely not supposed to be sticking out that far. Let's get in here and uh, see what's going on. Keep missing. All right, now, geez, come on. Over there, this way, come on. All right, here we are. Uh, um, Bob, you're gonna have to move out of the way here. Sorry, my bad. So, you're gonna be so surprised how easy this is. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is remove, wait, let's make sure there's no paint in it first. Yep, no paint. Then take the air end, holy cow, cap off. It's been a minute since I've taken this apart. Next step is your needle chuck. It holds your, <sighs> okay, so, if you see right here, when paint gets in the wrong way in this channel, which is not supposed to be in there at all, it even leaked way back here. Your airbrush has needle packing right here that is supposed to keep paint from going this way. Paint is only supposed to go that way to make the art, not to make your hands messy, okay? So it gets in here, it's, it's, it's seized up pretty good. So what I do is I grab me old needle nose pliers and get a little, mm, there we go. Oh. Don't drop it. There we go. That's better. And also, what I like to do is have me a little cup. Now I just drop all my parts in it. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Now you get your pull your needle out. If you can, okay, it's seized up too. That's fine. Look, just grab your old needle nose. Be careful. Grab it and pull it out. But I've noticed when I go to pull it out, I'll get like a little, like, cause you're, it surprises you when it lets go. So you try to push back. And then if you do that, you could damage the needle. So I go ahead and take this off. Well, I'm gonna take it off with my needle nose. Sure, fine, whatever. Just be careful. Just grab right on the threads there. Tight grip, it should take, yeah, real simple. It's not really, it's not usually that tight. Again, drop everything in there. Do the same with this one. And also, look how, look at that needle. That's nuts, look how far that thing's sticking out. Just give a little, little, little gentle persuasion. Don't be afraid, there we go. These parts, just be gentle, gentle persuasion. See anything in there? Hello in there. There you go, look at that bad boy. Sheesh, that is dangerous looking, huh? All right, now you should be okay to pull your needle out. Just don't pull forward. There we go. Oh, this mug is caked up. Oh, look at that. That's where it sticks. Man, needle still looks pretty good. Pretty sharp. I must just sit that to the side right there for a minute. The next thing is this squeaky little booger. And I know a lot of you love that sound. There we go. Don't lose your spring. There is a spring in here. And this comes to tip number one. I don't know how many, there's gonna be probably only one. But I do this when I first get a new airbrush and periodically as I clean, every time I clean it, I'll give us a little spring, a little stretch. So what I'm doing is I'm stretching gently and rotating. I'm not pulling on the very end, I'm gripping the whole thing, kind of like letting it go. And that'll extend your spring so that your trigger is more responsive because on these airbrushes, you really are most of the time only pulling back your trigger, like barely that much. Yeah, that much. Me get your measuring tape out, I'm just kidding. No, 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 drop it in the cup. This guy here, there's that guy. So this flap, when you put it back, 
goes in, it sticks out right there like that. But I'll show you that when we put it back in. Just remember, let's get this bad boy out too. It shouldn't be stuck, but it is. There we go. Sheesh, look at that. That is not supposed to happen. Oh, it looks like he got stabbed or something. All right, two more parts to take apart, and that is this part of the tip. These tips last a long time. Now listen, this is gonna be stuck too. Don't use your needle nose on this. Just use your fingers and kind of push your thumb, not on the end, but in the middle, that way. There we go. Don't take that apart. It doesn't need taken apart. And if you see, sometimes your needle going in and out of here will put a fine little hairline crack on the end here in which you would just have to replace the whole thing. And I literally buy my replacement parts off of coastairbrush.com. My buddy David, and all of his staff literally have the best, most rounded knowledge of airbrushes. If you have any questions, they don't mind answering and helping you out. Put it in the cup. And this is the last part. It's all one piece. So what I do is I put it in the coop and oh, there's another piece. I put everything in there and I put some lacquer thinner in here. And this is a good time to admit, not all airbrushes are created equal. You see they have little O-rings and some airbrushes have cheapy O-rings and the lacquer thinner messes them up. So be careful with that. You might wanna remove the O-rings. Now I'm gonna put some lacquer thinner in here. Depending on what kind of paint this is, this caked up. Oh gosh, I'm making a mess. Why is that green? What? Okay, I thought it was just red stuck in here, but there's some some other colorages going on here. But Createx has this stuff called Restore that you can soak and clean your airbrushes with. It works really good also. Normally, you would do your needle as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and while this is soaking, put my brushes, let go. Put my brushes over here and I'm gonna get out the new needle. The new needles come with a protective loop on it right there. Wait, wait a minute, this needle is thicker. I have switched up my needles somehow. No wonder that mug blew back on me, okay? When you take your airbrushes apart, if you do more than one at a time, try not to mix them up. That's a good tip for you. This diameter is bigger than this one. This is the absolute wrong needle. No wonder it's stuck out so far, because it didn't fit. Look at the difference there. Oh well, you know, yeah, you live and learn. All right, you've been soaking for a little while. Like you don't have to let them soak that long. Depends on how bad it is. This one's been soaking maybe five, 10 minutes. I don't know. It really doesn't take very much. So basically, all you're gonna do now, and you should probably wear gloves, you know? I don't know. Sensitive. And I'll put a link to these little bad boys because these are awesome. Because obviously they're way smaller than my fingers and they fit in these little things. Just dip it in the old thinner. Give it a good little scrubber dubber dubber and then dip it, rinse it out. Huh, do you feel better? Okay, good. Just take your time. You know how to clean stuff. Pretend like you're doing the dishes or something. Like you do dishes. That's what I have a dishwasher for. Oh, yeah. Don't put these in the dishwasher. I don't know that I have to say that, but uh, part of me thinks that I might have to tell one of you that. Probably you. So what you basically want to do is you want to clean out the inside where you got all that paint. You want to try to get your little air chamber down there. If you look in here, I don't know if you can see in the dark in there, there's a little hole where your trigger goes into. Just get that cleaned out. Don't shove it too much. Just really just work it, work it. Give it a dip, rinse it out, keep going. You don't have to clean this. You should not have paint in here. You got paint in here, you got, you got a bigger problem because you got something leaking this way. I can't say that I've ever had that happen, but you know, it's first time for everything. Literally, just take your time. Get to know your airbrush. Clean it up, clean the threads, put on some soft music, dim the lights. Whoa. All right, when you got that done, keep moving on. Just do the rest of the stuff. It's really like these are kind of, kind of self-explanatory there. Sometimes I like to take a paintbrush and get it in there because the end of these are pointy and not as blunt. And sometimes you need to just get it in there in this way. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. 
Now listen, this thing is like 15 years old. You don't have to get ridiculous about getting every little piece. And if you'll notice, if yours is older, the insides start turning like a little goldy color. It's just what it is, except it. it's like us all. We, we age, things discolor, they change. We can't get all our spots off. Just accept it for what it is. Just do the best you can and grab something else. This thing, it's not gonna probably need too much cleaning out, but we're gonna give it a little whirly with early. Wipe it off, and move on. So you can either pour this all out, which I'm not gonna do because it'll make a big mess, but you could grab your parts with a tool. Instead of sticking your finger into this lovely liquid spring, nothing on it, just basically dry it off. Put it over here. Let's put these things. And listen, here's a tip for you. Use a cloth of some sort, because you put this mug here, and it rolls on off the table. It's gonna be hard to find. Just make it easy on yourself, you know what I'm saying? Certain parts are super easy. They don't really need anything but wiping off. Uh, which one do I want next? Let go, you loser. <laughs> Clean off your threads. Move it on. Ooh, look at all these beautiful shiny parts. Next. Don't be shy. This one's really easy to clean. Don't forget your threads. Also on this one, you wanna do the front here. Here we go. Dry it off, sit it to the side. Yippee, yippee, yippee. Oh, dropped it. That one got away. Wow, look how much better that looks. <whistles> Literally, that looks so much better. Find you a little, this is a tiny one. We're gonna have to get a little one for this guy. Let's get a little bitty one. Here we go. I wanna reiterate, every time you clean, Give it a little rinse, because there's stuff loosening up in there. There we go. Do, 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 do. Next. Let's get this guy, he's easy. Like Sunday morning. That guy didn't have kids and go to church, apparently. Sunday morning, be crazy. Can I get a witness? Look at that trigger. <whistles> Shiny new trigger. Man, it's not new. Look at that worn. Like I said, this thing's like at least 15 years old, but that's why I love the Iwata HPCS so much. You like, it's like a Timex, it keeps the licking, ticks on ticking, or whatever, how that goes. It is literally the workhorse of the airbrush. Not too many parts left. When you're going to grab these little tip pieces, just be careful. You don't want to damage any parts. And this is where it might be, in a, get it. I'm a terrible fisherman. Bruh. Two hours later. There we go. Be careful when you're grabbing these parts uh, that you don't damage the ends. Get the little small in there. There we go. It doesn't have to go all the way through. Just get it clean. Every paintbrush will come in. Look at this guy. He got crazy hair, dude. But this is literally what I use this paintbrush for. And it works so good. This piece is just the uh, end cap that protects the needle from getting bent if your needle is the right needle and it's not sticking out. A needle chuck, give it a good cleaning. It's not very often you should have to take your airbrush all the way apart to clean it. Just rinsing it out, blowing through it should typically be enough, but there comes a time where you're gonna have to do it. And you need to know your equipment. This one is the last part that I'll do. And you wanna just, I'm not putting pressure. I've got in there and I'm spinning. And what I typically do, is I'll take an old airbrush needle and I'll angle it and try to scrape the edges coming out and then give it a little rinse. And that is literally it. Now, just have to put it all back together. All right, I've got it laid out in the order that it goes in. We're gonna do this really quick because it is literally super simple. The first thing, put your compression tip on and then cap number one, tip number two, two cap, I don't know, whatever you call it. And then I leave this one off because what I want to do is when I'm ready to put the needle on, I want to be able to see, which I apparently didn't do last time. Next, point this towards the front, tilt it, and get it to stick out through that hole there. Your trigger has a little dangly thingy. This is actually what goes in the little hole that pushes down and does your air action. Next, your spring that you stretched because you got a better working trigger now. And then whatever this is called, the squeaky part. The next step is super, super crucial 
to be gentle. And whether you're using a new needle or not, you need to lube it. What I typically do is I'll put, give me the paper towel. Normally what I'll do, I'll take my airbrush needle on a pooper towel and do a drop here, drop here, and then rub and twist, rub and twist. You might not can go forward because you'll stab something. Just twist it, get it on there. Matter of fact, it is really a good idea to put a little dropper right in your air hole. Is that technical? I could have told you that earlier before you put it on. Hopefully, you watched the video first and then you did it. Oh yeah, that feels better. So silky and smooth. When you're tightening this up, I'll go to the stop and then back it up like a half whole turn. Now, this is where you have to be really careful. And if you're not very confident in your carefulality-ness, is that a word? I don't know, probably not. You can actually put it in through this way. It is kind of hard to do through here. And if you've had a lot of issues, if you've been this guy any little bit, it affects your, where are you going? It affects your spray pattern. What are you doing jumping? It jumps straight out of my hand. So you can go in this way is a little life hack. It'd help if you turned it the right way there, buddy. So pull it all the way back, then put this guy on. Whoa, a little shaky there, aren't you, fella? It's cause you guys make me so nervous. Snug it up. You don't want to Hercules it or nothing, but you want it snug. Oh my gosh, did y'all see that? Did any of you catch that? No, you didn't. what I do wrong? I'll tell you. Put this guy on first. Slide him over, then slide this. Be gentle on your tips. Super delicate parts, they're tiny. If you take care of them, they'll take care of you. Make you look like a master. So what you're gonna do, gently push this and look here. Y'all you're doing is you're feeling for this to gently stop and you're looking for the needle. Cause we don't have the end cap on, remember? That, that's it. Look how much less this comes out than the other needle, the wrong needle we had in at the beginning. Here's your sign, buddy. Now, your needle seated up to the very front. This is when you slide on your old needle chuck. Tap, tap, twist, twist. Tighten that up pretty good. There, that's it. Last step is to put your old protector on there. Now listen, don't bang, you did all this hard work. Take your time, don't bang the needle and bend it. And some people leave this off to airbrush. I like to have it on. Don't forget your lid, always. So before we go, of course, we're gonna have to hook this bad boy up and see how much better it flows. Even though, like, we didn't before, but you literally saw it in that last video where it exploded on my hand, which was ridiculous. All right, before we get started with that and do our little test spray, I wanna say, if you have another airbrush, you can use the same water. Just drop them bad boy parts back on in there. Let them soak for a while. And when you're done, dump this out and clean it out and use this solvent proof measuring cup. Keep that. Don't use plastic or styrofoam. I don't need to tell you why, because if you do it, you'll find out immediately. All right, for our little test here, we're just gonna use some good old Black Bear Alkihol Ink. Black Hollyhock? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Oh, you might need to hook the air line up. That'd be a good idea. All right, we got some air. Let's give some practice. Woo! Like a butter, baby. And if you need to see more techniques on how to practice, get your target practice, trigger action, and control on point. See what I did to the point. Check this video right here. And happy painting. And three, two, one. <laughs>